Sue Moroni. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, I want to speak on the issue that is raised in my supplementary order paper number 347, which is a, about, the, about ensuring that every vehicle involved in this type of service would need to be fitted with an in-vehicle security camera system. And I know that the Minister um, spoke about, about this issue before, and I just have two words to say to the Minister about his um, assertion that actually an app that tells you who the driver is and who the supposed passenger is <coughs> fixes this issue, and, and therefore if they have that application in place that they should be exempted from having these in-vehicle security cameras. Well, the two words I want to say to the Minister are Rod Stewart. Because, um, oh, the Minister's that's, that's piqued his interest. That's, that did catch his attention. Oh, because because, <laughs> because the, we had um, Rod Stewart come to the Select Committee. Um, and of course it wasn't actually Rod Stewart, but this man had been able to register as an Uber driver using the Uber app and using the name Rod Stewart and using the photo of the singer Rod Stewart. And he clearly, when he came into the committee, looked nothing like Rod Stewart. His hair was somewhat tidier. Um, didn't look like Rod Stewart at all. But he'd been able to operate as an Uber driver under um, uh, an application that he... Well, yes, he did. And I know that Uber contests this, but, but he actually did. He actually picked people up. They knew he wasn't Rod Stewart, but they were in the vehicle anyway. Um, and so I think that was a demonstration of just how... Uh, I mean, that, that was a, an exaggerated example of how these systems are not foolproof. Because not only that instance, where someone can register and, and even use the, fa the, the photo of someone quite famous, who they're obviously not, and, and, and still register and, and do that. But secondly... Um, that also, what a lot of the submitters raised with us is that if you are a passenger and you're an Uber user, and so you're registered and you, you make an arrangement for, for an Uber to come and pick you up, what's to say that you're actually that person, but more so what's going to happen is that the other couple of people who come with you in that vehicle may not be registered at all. And so who's to know what, what their identity is if something goes wrong? So that's why it's not the same, Minister, as having every vehicle um, in those 18 metropolitan areas, those 18 largest areas, fitted with an in-vehicle security camera system. I have a really sad but um, recent incident to uh, discuss that, that absolutely raises the, the reason why we need these in-vehicle security camera systems. So they were bought in not that long ago, actually. I think they were bought in um, in 2014. Have I got that right? 2014? It's pretty recent. And they were bought in for a reason. There were two shocking murders of taxi drivers, two brutal murders of taxi drivers that happened, one in Auckland and one in Christchurch. And so that is the reason why the current government bought those in. And do you know what? Instantly... The um, taxi drivers knew that they worked. And a lot of the taxi companies that had argued against that level of regulation at the time now are arguing in favour of it. But they want it for the playing field and they want it for all of these services. Because what they found was that not only did the violent offences drop immediately and have continued to stay low, and in fact there hasn't been a reported murder of a taxi driver since, the, since this regulation came into being. But what they also found was that they didn't have as many runners. So people knowing that there was a, a, a system operating in that vehicle meant that they were much less likely to try and take off without paying. So there was an immediate, not only health and safety benefit to these companies and obviously the safety of their staff, but there was also an immediate economic benefit. And so some of the companies that were opposed to them when they were introduced are now big fans of this because they've seen how well they operate. 
But the really recent incident that I want to refer to, um, Mr Chair, if I could have another call, Mr Chair? Mr Chair. Sue Moroni. The incident that happened in Hamilton, um, just on the weekend, actually on Friday night, the shocking and unnecessary murder of a man um, in Norton, stabbed to death. Um, the arrests that have been made are three young women. Now, um, those, um, those young women, actually, I, was, I, I caught a taxi back from the airport um, last evening, and the taxi driver that basically caught those young women um, was my taxi driver. Wow. And here's the, story, here's the story he told me. He is a hero. Before I tell the story, I just want to say um, to Norman Kingy's family, um, express my sincere sympathies to them and, um, and say, may Norm rest in peace because he was a deeply valued member of our community. But, you know, this is, this is a sad situation he found himself in. Those young women um, allegedly murdered him uh, around about 10 o'clock, 10.30, 11 o'clock on Friday night. Um, around about 2 o'clock... The next morning, this taxi driver was called to an address nearby and, um, and picked up three young women. And, and he said that he'd not long had them in the vehicle and he realised that, that he was in trouble. Because even though these were quite young women, they were instantly aggressive with him. And, um, and he just knew that they were bad news and he needed them out of his vehicle as soon as possible. So he had an in-vehicle security camera system operating in his, in his vehicle. And even though he had that, he knew that he needed them out of his vehicle. He saw a cop car, he pulled up to the cop car, pulled up behind the cop car, got out and said to the, to the policeman, the police officer, get these women out of my car. They are bad news. The policeman went and got them out of the car, realised who he had, <laughs> um, and, and that's why the police were able to um, arrest these young women so quickly after that murder. But the reason why I tell the story is because, you know, the app that the Minister talked about that you can get an exemption from having this in-vehicle security system for? If one of those women was registered, one of those young women was registered, sure, may not have caused a problem ever before, go to that address, get picked up, but guess what? The other two get in with her. And the other two are the bad eggs. Because what this driver told me is he said, actually two of them he thought were pretty whacked out on drugs. Um, one of them was completely sober in his assessment. So that could have been the one. That could have been the one that used the, the, the app to call up the driver and then the other two climb in as well. Now, if that person is in that situation without an in-vehicle security camera, what, and without just driving down the road and having the good sense to do what this driver did, which was pull up immediately behind the cop car and, and get them out of there, and the good luck that that, that that police car happened to be there, what might have happened? What might have happened next? Because I can tell, I can tell the House that this taxi driver um, was thanking his lucky stars that he did what he did. Because um, who knows? Did they have the knife still on them? What could have happened next? It could have been an even deeper tragedy for our community. So, you know, I, I do want to come back to that issue about deregulation, Minister, because yes, you may be proud that it's deregulation, and certainly um, if it's a level playing field and it's sensible deregulation, we have no problem with that. But time and time again, this House gets it wrong with going too far. And time and time again, when there's a national government in place, that deregulation does go too far because the National Party always argues, oh, it's too expensive. It's too expensive. Well, how expensive are taxi drivers and Uber drivers' lives? How expensive, what cost do we put on the, the safety of people um, who are impaired, either temporarily through um, having a night out or permanently? impaired through their disability. What the price, moment. Minister, do we put on that? And the Labour Party says at least the cost 
of getting an in-vehicle security camera system in those 18 locations across the board, not penalising the taxi industry by making them have them, but not the other group. And let's get serious about having security and safety first. The question is that the Claire Curran. Chair. So I want to address um, my remarks.